Hi everybody, it's Bob Kilner again. Um, today I'm going to talk about the uh, Chernobyl disaster from 1986. And I know that um, in my a previous video I had said that I am not a big fan of these PowerPoint narrations, and I really ain't. But the um, key here is that to hit on the effective domain, I thought this was a really good idea. And I want to warn you ahead of time that there are some graphic pictures near the end of the PowerPoint, middle to end of the PowerPoint, um, that if you feel like you don't want to um, look at them, you might not want to watch the rest of it after I get through the first two or three slides. So I just want to give you that warning. Now I do use this this PowerPoint near the end of the year when I talk about nuclear chemistry, which is um, near the end of May, right before school lets out, right before I lose my seniors to graduation. So um, this is actually something that I really do talk about and I really get into when I talk about it because it's very... Um, it does affect them in a lot of ways, even though it, it doesn't directly affect them, just talking about it and seeing images of it are real somber for them. So sit back and I um, hope you enjoy this and I hope you get some information out of it that you didn't know. Okay, first off, nuclear reactions um, are powered by mainly by nuclear fission, which is the splitting of a nucleus into fragments. And uh, nuclear power plants use nuclear fission to generate power since fission releases a very large amount of energy. And what it does is when they split those, um, they split atoms into and, and, and release neutrons, they collect those neutrons, and the collection of those neutrons produces heat, which then is turned using a steam turbine into electricity. Now, the chain reaction, each fission of uranium-235 releases additional neutrons. So if one fission reaction produces two neutrons, those two can produce an additional two and so on, and it just keeps going. Now, there's a lot of problems with this, and, and I'm going to get into it in a second why this is so controversial, but mainly because it's, it's so dangerous, and, you know, the whole PowerPoint is about the Chernobyl accident, which was part of one of these dangers. Nuclear ac accidents. The reason nuclear power is so controversial is because of its dangers to humans and the environment. Uh, keeping the chain reaction growing while preventing it from racing out of control requires precise monitoring and continual adjusting of the rods, which control the fission process. Those rods are what collect the neutrons, and if those rods are damaged, if any part of the nuclear reactor is damaged, or they cannot um, control this reaction, it's going to spin out of control, giving off harmful levels of radiation and resulting in horrific effects. And this is really what happened in Chernobyl. They had a, they had a nuclear meltdown. So in 1986, and I was three years old, some of you are much older than me, some of you might even be younger than me. The Chernobyl nuclear power plant in the Ukraine, then part of the USSR, had a nuclear meltdown in, in reactor number four, and this is why it's sometimes also called Chernobyl number four. Further explosions in a fire caused a nuclear release between 30 and 40 times that release when the first atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. Now think about that for a second. Put that into perspective. You have, you know, you've seen pictures, you've seen um, and, and talked about uh, what happened when we dropped the atomic bomb and how much damage and people were vaporized and there were just shadows of people left on things stuff like that. Think about the damage it did and then think about 30 to 40 times that and how amazing that is. Now in, you know, coincident or not even coincidentally, but um, just ironically, I was talking to somebody the other day and reading an, an article about something. All this happened in the Ukraine. The Ukraine also has the most fertile land in all, in all of um, Europe. So just one of those weird things. I just thought that was interesting. I just figured I'd include it because with all the bad things that have happened near the area around Chernobyl and the surrounding areas, it's, Ukraine still has the most fertile land in all Europe. So, now, as I said, if, you, if you're um, upset by, you know, graphic pictures, I suggest not, not shutting the video off at this point. Um, the, next, the next picture is just a picture of the reactor, but after that it gets kind of graphic, so I, I, I'm giving you your warning now if you, do, if you don't want to see this. So, this is a picture of Chernobyl number four, reactor number four, and what was left of it. You see the stack on the right still there and the little building in the background, but the whole area where the reactor was is completely destroyed and a lot of stuff all the way around is completely destroyed by this. And obviously radiation is invisible, but the radius of this thing was just monstrous. And to this day, the levels are so toxic, nobody can even go there. So the aftermath is that 22 years later, the radiation levels at Chernobyl are still so toxic that they will not wear off for over 50 more years. And that's just estimated. That could be way longer. They don't know. A large percentage of Chernobyl babies have severe birth defects. This is what I'm going to get into here shortly. And this is why I said please shut it off now if you're offended by graphic pictures. 
Chernobyl disaster still remains the largest nuclear disaster in history, and there have been many more. The Davis Bessie plant, which is right down the street from me, where I'm at right now in Perry, Ohio, um, had a crack in the core a few years ago, and they were worried about a meltdown, so they shut it down. It's been shut down since. Three Mile Island, on the other hand, everybody makes this big deal out of Three Mile Island when nothing there actually happened. The problem was they had a they had a problem inside, so they shut the reactor down. Well, a week and a half before Three Mile Island occurred, the movie The China Syndrome came out. And if you've ever seen it, it's about a nuclear meltdown and the cover-up behind it. Well, they turned around and they completely freaked out and there was never any danger to pe the, pe the workers there, there was never any danger to the environment or the people living around the plant, nobody died, nobody got sick. So, you know, it's, it's big, it's scary, you hear the word nuclear and you get afraid, but this is where a lot of the controversy comes in as well. So, what I want to really get into is these birth defects that are, that are caused by this radiation and unfortunately there's still people there that don't have the resources to escape. There were people there when it happened that were pregnant, that were going to get pregnant, that just mutations and nasty things happen. And it's really, I'm going to be quiet when I show you these pictures because it's really a somber thing and you really have to take it to heart when you see these pictures. So I'm going to be quiet for a few minutes. There's four or five pictures I want to show you and this is your final warning to turn away right now if you think you're going to be upset by these. And here we go. So the only thing left standing, interestingly enough, in the area surrounding the, the plant was a single Ferris wheel. And, and surprisingly, as close as it was, it survived and it appears untouched. And, it, and they never tore it down, they left it there just as kind of a reminder of what it was like before. And it's really a somber thing, whether you see it in pictures or if you ever see it in person, if you're ever lucky enough to see it, you know, hopefully not standing in the middle of this radiation zone, but from a distance. It's really, really a somber sight. So let me show you the picture of that real fast. So finally, if you're interested, go to your video store or look online and see when they're going to you know, play it. There's an Emmy Award winning documentary called Chernobyl Heart. What Chernobyl Heart is, is it's a disorder of, it's a, it's a birth defect basically that causes a hole in the heart of young kids when they're born. Now the whole story is about the birth defects in general and you know what I was talking about before about not having the resources to escape people that are still there and American doctors and Russian doctors that are going over there and opening clinics and things to treat these people and pretty much giving up their whole lives to help the people that have these disorders and it's, it's, it's really interesting but it's also very graphic. I had several girls that, that bawled their eyes out during it during my class. A few had to leave. They were so upset by it. But even those same girls understood, you know, where I was going with it, what I wanted to get the point across. And it's it's really moving. And, and if you have the chance to watch it, I suggest you do. It's really, it's a very, very, very good uh, documentary. So um, that is my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And I will see you all soon. Thank you.